bitch be quiet. A lot of niggas fake, so I'm moving in silence. All right, and we are live. What is going on? What's going on, Soul Tribe? How y'all doing? How y'all living? It's your boy. Listen, man, I got another one here. Bear with me. I'm getting things organized on the other feed, like always. Um, you know, you guys hit that like button. Go ahead and share the live stream. Listen, I understand. Okay. I went back and looked at the feed and look, told you the audio is going to be messed up. I did go talk to my son. You know, he's going to work with me. Hey, Xander is messing up, man. Xander. All right. That's his cue. So we're going to try to run this again. If my audio is messed up, doesn't really matter. As long as you can hear the clips. Okay. We're doing the best we can with what we, what we have. All right. No further ado. Let's get right into it. Let's go. Women are attracted, generally speaking, the research shows to men based on three reasons. The third is kindness. They don't want someone who's gonna be a good person. They're impressed by men who are good to their parents and kind and go out of their way to help people when there's no reciprocal expectation. The second is intelligence. Because the smarter you are, the more likely you are to make good decisions and protect your family's offspring. And by the way, the fastest way to communicate intelligence is humor. I've always said, if you can make a woman laugh, you can kiss her. Well, and then the most important thing though to women, and people don't like to admit this, is the man's ability to signal future resources. It's not even he has to be rich now, but he has to have his act together such that he looks like he will be a decent provider. And the number of people, the number of men we're producing that qualify in this category is shrinking. Lots of in line, man. And again, the the potential thing is what a lot of guys are noticing right now. Because a lot of guys, you know, have their money together. A lot of these alpha dudes, right? But um, they're noticing that women are looking at potential. And see, this is where a lot of the Sigma type of man, you know, is coming into play. Because, you know, normally a Sigma is going through some stuff. And some trials, tribulations. And has to start over uh, in some type of way and get it out the mud but women can see the drive the uh intensity the focus and the vision and the dream of that man and they'll get behind them you know what i'm saying like they'll support that type of guy because if you're a dreamer and you can articulate yourself right and you believe in yourself and believe in what you have going on 100 percent and you're not going to take nothing from nobody you're not going to let nobody put you down or whatever you have going on let you know when nobody put that down it it drives women women love that that's a confidence level that you know money can't buy so it's very important yeah you're gonna take it you're gonna take that dick you're gonna take that dick huh? i'm gonna pop off a piece of my yeah. You don't take it. Hey, I know the women be uh, having to talk themselves into this when I be sending those text messages because, see, if you guys don't know, you know, women like the story, man. If you if you start talking to them in text about what you're going to do and it's detailed, you know, if you've been if you've done anything with women before, you should know how to like articulate it. But if you can make it very detailed, like a story, man, and you talk about all this stuff, man, it'll get them worked up. It'll get them in the bedroom a lot faster than you think because they want to sit there and think about stuff. Imagine things that they're thinking about what you're going to do to her that her man that she ain't told you about won't do. Right. A uh, clip that's going viral. She said, uh, why do men stay when they're unhappy? Right. Mm. Because women in relationship for happiness, men, not men in relationship could this minds. She ain't understand what I was saying. When I was saying I ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? Two different things. You look good. Oh, I'm so happy you came. Girl, me too. She is so pretty. How's it been? 
How's it been? No epidural. Pushed her out. Damn near burned my pussy off. Man, her head came out. I almost closed my fucking leg. Breastfeeding. Great. Nipples burn. Ouchie. When they latch and then unlatch and then relatch. The fuck is you doing? Haven't took a shit since I was pregnant. Bitch. Oh, Hemorrhoid. I want to take a shot, but I'd have to pump and dump. Wake up. Unfortunately, I ain't got pumps to be dumping. How am I still having contractions and I'm looking at the baby? You better sleep when that baby sleep. How? Bitch, I got shit to do. And when she up, I can't do shit. I sit down too long my she must be from maryland or something that's something they say um, maryland i don't know i don't know where she's from but yeah man uh this sounds horrible oh yeah man you wouldn't be falling apart when you be having them babies man oh my nigga know how to fucking slay dick and that's why i'm crazy as fuck because that nigga no accountability no accountability what women want hey, is this your dad no obviously not okay then why are you talking to my dad mom why because i'm allowed to hey, but is this your dad yeah no yeah no it's, it's my dad hey, is this your dad no obviously oh man adorable free game Dig, let me put you on game to solve the riddle of why you misunderstood all the time. The reason why you misunderstood a lot is because you can see a world that everybody else can't see. Everybody else see grass. You see the seed in the water under the ground. So when people come to you, they come to you with surface level stuff, but you see the root of the problem. Eventually trying to do that all the time will have people thinking that you better than them or you trying to, you know, trying to stun on them, whatever the case may be, but that was never your intentions. This is why you misunderstood all the time because you're gifted. You understand what I'm saying? And, and one thing about being gifted, the gifted always suffer from anxiety because you see a world that nobody else can see. And it's hard for you to explain because who you going to talk to about it. So what you do is try to suppress that side of you and try to be with the common folks and talk about regular stuff, but you suffer in that world because you're a giant when they're trying to run in crowds. Actually, you don't need none of them around you. You're actually the giant of the crowd and they always see you first. This is why you fall out with energies before everybody else do. And they always look at you like you the troublemaker, but then six months later, the one that you fell out with, everybody falls out with. And by the time they come to you with it, you done already moved on with life. You understand what I'm saying? You have to learn how to see the world that you see because it has a purpose to it. Your pain has a purpose. That's the reason why you can see the way you can see because all the pain that you started out with. You understand what I'm saying? But when you tap into you, you tap into that. Dick. Yeah, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, When I first got on YouTube, I actually was trying to work with people and I was like the fitness type of thing and um, fitness channels. And I was like, you know, networking with them, going and watching their videos, leaving comments, woo, woo, woo. But I'm an engineer and I told these people that. And one of these dudes, man, it was um the dude called like the weightlifting geek. And this dude was like copying everything. See, I, I'm always been on this. And um, people have always copied me. He was copying everything I was doing. He was copying everything I was doing. And he was irking me. You know what I'm saying? And this and I start looking at my uh, my um studio, YouTube studio. And these people, my my average view duration went from like uh, four minutes or three minutes. My videos were no longer than 10, which is pretty good to an average of 19 or 26 seconds. When these people started, um, I started adding myself to that group. So they were coming over and watching like 10, 20 seconds of my video, which and then hitting a the like button, then. And then moving on, which will bomb your video. It, it makes YouTube think that your videos aren't no good. So these people were doing it intentionally, intentionally or unintentionally. But they were messing my stuff up. And I seen this and I started telling them, hey, y'all, just stop watching my videos. Like, just, just stop. You're not watching them all the way through. Stop watching my videos. But I said all that to say this, man. I had a falling out with that weightlifting geek guy. I called him out on copying me and. That's not what YouTube's about and all this stuff. But to a lot of people, that is what YouTube's about. Copying everybody else. That's why everything seems the same. But I'm not about that. So, you know, I was on my live stream one day. He came in on my live stream and was like, hey, what's going on, bro? It's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. I'm done with you. Don't come around here acting like you don't know what you're doing. Anyway, long story short, um, after I excommunicated from that group, these people are popping back up in my feed. I, I guess they're checking up on me. 
And this dude, um, he used to be calling himself the weightlifting geek. There was another dude in our group called the J Jordan, right? Um, this dude I'm pretty cool with. You know, we're still pretty cool. I, I you know, uh, like his videos and stuff on TikTok. But that weightlifting geek guy changed his name from the weightlifting geek to the J mentor. So he's copying the, that dude called the J Jordan and he changed his name to the J mentor. And he's again, all I'm saying is everybody noticed that he was copying everybody after the fact. But I had to be the first one to notice it. They try to make me seem like, oh, he's just looking too much into things and reading too much. Nah, man, I can tell when somebody's got a wicked spirit on them. Because there's, no, there's nothing worse than having an ambitious person that don't have any creativity to them. That'll turn into envy, man. Someone is super ambitious and wants to get things done, but don't have no ability to get it done by themselves. A man don't have to accept dealing with a woman with children. You don't have to accept it. There's a 18 year old every day. There's a 19 year old every day. There's a 20 year old every day. And we can jump it up three points. There's a 23, 24 year old That's every day turning that age in America looking for the right men. Why are you dealing with women in their thirties that's already been ran through and want you to be stepdaddy? It is only fair to be a stepdad if the woman is giving you a service that's better than a woman without children. If a guy's coming into your life where he has to take on your responsibilities and another man's responsibility, and he has to protect you and die at any moment, somebody intrudes in the house or step up to you where he has to risk his life for you and your son or your daughter or children. Yeah, you have to give him a high service, loyalty to the highest level. And he has to control all things that comes to the family. He makes the final decision. A man don't have to accept. The, the more educated and financially stable a woman is, the least likely she. A man. Hey, yo, it's a fact, man. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you can't find one, but she has to be on her stuff. Like instead of us allowing women to put these crazy, unrealistic expectations on us. As far as dating, we should be putting those on them like they're competing for us anyway. They're just trying to be manipulative about it. They don't want you to know they're competing for you. Right. But we know. So now that we know we need to use that, make them compete. If it's some single mother or something, she better be top notch, you know, like on some special forces level type of woman. You know what I mean? Like able to, you know. Hey, what's going on? All right, I'll be out there in a second. Man, our friends over here, man. I gotta, uh, hey guys, I gotta go. Um, I gotta go get some gas and stuff like that. And uh, one of my neighbors is over here right now to help me out with that. Hey, Andy, I'll be right out, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, and uh, you guys, I'll I'll go live a little bit later, but you know, we're still dealing with things out here in Western North Carolina. And if uh, thank God for the people out here, shout out to uh, my neighbor Andy and his wife. You know, what I'm, these people have been helping me out and my son out this entire time. Shout out to my other neighbors. It's about the people in North Carolina. You know, the service workers weren't the greatest at getting things back up, but the people, the people out here, you know, I don't care what they're saying about anybody. All that stuff is, man, look, they act like family out here. Race don't matter. Anyway, y'all, love and light. I'm your brother. I'm not going to hold you. I'll be back a little bit later. I'm going to close this down. But uh, peace, love, and light, y'all. I got to get things going. Got to take care of my son. In this uh, stream. In this game, you gotta have that dog in you. Made in America. Uh,